Hello Talents, we are on now our last chapter, which is chapter 14. And in this chapter, we will learn how to work on 3D printing, how we can export our meshes, UVs, and other items. And also, we will learn how to do rendering. So without further ado, let's put this series on a successful end. At last, I am going to render this model I have been working on for months. Wait, how did it stop working? What? I wanted to charge my phone! We'll start our new chapter right now. And this chapter is about 3D printing, rendering, and exporting in ZBrush. So let's talk about the 3D printing here. When creating 3D models or 3D printing, it's important to make sure that its various shapes and structures are thick enough to not break. The minimum thickness depends on several factors like the type of the printer or the length of the structure or how much weight a thin area might have to hold. ZBrush lets you visualize the thickness of every point on the surface. So let's see how it works. Now, before using the visualizer, you should know the size of your model. You should know that it's the correct size. So for uh, what units that you are printing out, all those things. So the size is correct, the units are correct and everything. There's lots of ways to deal with the scale in ZBrush and it's a big topic beyond the scope of this video. So I might not cover all the whole thing here, but let's say we got the scale worked out for this model. For example, if I will go here in our geometry and here I have the size and this is my scale and you know, uh, I am happy with this size. So this is already decided. So, uh, in order to do the visualization over here, let's come down to the polypaint option here. Now, inside the polypaint option, you will see we have different options. And one of the options that I'm looking over, uh, that we should be looking over here is called paint from thickness, which is here. Now, paint from thickness, what it will do is that it is going to paint the model with colors depending on how thick it is in a various area now this process uh, might take longer or shorter time depending on how many polygons are there on the model at any particular moment so there is a subdivision on this uh, model here and which i think it's uh, it's fine so you can see uh, that it uh, it is like a fairly simple model okay and there are some uh, like subdivision level here, but not a lot of uh, polygons are the, uh, like uh, are on that. So not so many uh, points. So it's fairly uh, like a simple model as in short. Now, depending on the type of the printer you're sending it to, and depending on the materials and all kinds of factors, there might a different minimum and maximum thickness that you might want to use. So now let's say for the sake of argument that I'm sending this one to a normal printer which uh, might be using a minimum thickness of 0.2 uh, like millimeters and the maximum thickness of 0.3 millimeters so this is for uh, you know maximum structural integrity so for minimum 0.2 oh, oh, okay and just for the maximum 0.3 so this is our preferred thickness so if I will go here, I have to define 0.2. Okay, I can write here 0.2, it's already 0.2. This is 0.3, I, it is already 0.3. So they both are actually set up already. Now, what I will do here is that, I will go ahead and press this thickness uh, from thickness now. So simply, you can see here, what this did is everything that is blue, is totally safe you can see there is a blue area and that blue area is totally safe everything that is red as you can see over here at some parts that means this area is not safe it is below 
our uh, 0.2 uh, millimeters uh, range and color which are between uh, like you know 2.2 and 0.3 are some other colors like green yellow or those kind of things now with 3d printing some very small structures that don't stick out you can see see here at this part okay they are still safe even if they are red they are still safe so uh, because they are not sticking too much out so they are just fine however if you will notice the ears over here okay the ears are they are really sticking out far out in the space so they are going to be very fragile so they might break up this area might break up while printing so we have to think about this because first of all this is sticking out too much this is not sticking out even if we will leave it as it is right now so that will be fine but you have to worry about these areas but we will work on uh, all of this uh, at the same time so let's also uh, quickly look at how we can use this visualization uh, like visualization to fix up these areas so we are going to use the feature that we used previously in this course under the masking if you will go okay so let's go to the masking and inside the masking we have mask by color so we will go to the mask by color here now in the mask by color uh, we can uh, you can just uh, choose mask by the poly paint okay and sorry uh, not mask by color uh, is it what did i press before yeah i was about to click on mask by poly paint sorry mask by poly paint you have to click on it and then you will get this option and you can see that you have the whole thing on your screen now what we need to do here is that we just need to uh, bring up these red color on uh, and mask these red color so uh, just it is already uh, loaded so let's take this one bring it on your red color so you can see the red color are perfectly masked let's see if we can increase the tolerance or decrease the tolerance for two i think it is fine as 30 it's okay now i'll press okay here and you can see that it is already masked here now once this is masked so i want to work on this area so that means this should not be masked but uh, at the same time what i will do because this poly paint is kind of uh, distracting so i will go to the sub tool click on the brush icon so it will remove that poly paint from here and once i will finish my work i will bring it back now i will press control on my keyboard click it anywhere in the open space so that it will invert okay so uh, from here i might want to use the inflate brush by hitting B on my keyboard okay and I and then M and I will got my inflate uh, inflate brush over here now what does the inflate brush will do it will give me uh, it, it it's kind of puffing uh, it will kind of like puff out these details it's a puffing effect it will give me which will give some thickness okay so I will just go to the ears and start applying this here Okay, so you can see that it is like puffing this out. Okay, let me undo this. No, it's fine because I thought my symmetry is off. So symmetry is on, so I don't have to undo this. And I will give this area some thickness as well. Let's see back this area. And I can smooth some area also if it creates weird artifacts there. Now, one thing I really want to do here is a bit smoothing, not too much. And this area also, I can add a, even though I don't need here, but let's apply a bit of a thickness with some smoothness. Just so we can see how we can remove that uh, wall uh, thickness 
sort of thing there. Okay, so I think that's enough. Now I will remove the mask here and I will go back to my poly paint option and from thickness. Now you can see that it is kind of removing this part here. Okay, a bit of this I can do. Oops, in this area, in this part. And as I said before, it's okay to have some red amount here because this is not sticking out. Now from thickness, if I will apply, so you can see that it is reducing. So just keep on applying till you get everything, uh, everything gets fine. Okay. And also apply smoothness with it so smoothness also kind of work okay so almost we are done so i think this is not that critical okay So, because as it is going inwards, so I don't think this is uh, this part is that critical. But you know, actually, we are just uh, it's try and error sort of thing. Now you can go back here, turn this off, and you can see that how we have fixed it. So then you can go ahead and send it for printing. Maybe it has to fix these areas here. Now, one thing is that 100% you will not get what you're looking for. So, even though if it is showing some red areas up there in the printing, you might not get that uh, problem. Okay, so printing will run smooth without any kind of issues here. Okay, so there's always uh, special circumstances where you can get away with things being a little thin, or you might need things to be even thicker than the recommended thickness. But this visualizer is a great starting point for getting good results. So I hope you have understood about giving some thickness and solving the thickness issue, thinness issue in your 3D models. And if you have enjoyed my video, please click on the like button and I will be uploading new lessons, tutorials, live sessions and full courses along with other useful videos soon. So don't forget to click on the bell icon so you can get all the notifications. I will highly appreciate if you will give a shout out to my channel on your social media account which will help me to get more subscribers and this will really motivate me to create more content for you all. So guys, thanks a lot for your support and please continue supporting me and take care of yourself till we meet for the next lesson.